now. So 58% uh, poverty overall. Uh, we're looking today at 76%. Uh, we're looking now, at Miguel T. Grisella has quoted, quoted what, the World Bank, uh, these institutions. Uh, well, Yes, yes, there were times in 2010 and 29 when the price of oil was really high and Chavez was borrowing massively and and spending money on in patronage. And this is one of the problems here. The problem is that yes, 10 percent of the 10 uh, percent of the population, the hardcore Chavistas, were going out and taking advantage of the social programs. In other words, the problem is that the, what the opposition wants to do is is generalize these programs. These programs are not protected by the Constitution. They're they're the initiative of a president of an executive and. And so what the opposition wants to do is, for instance, it wanted to give titles to the people in the mission, the great mission, uh, the housing mission of Venezuela, uh, so that the people would no longer be forced to go out and, and march in demonstrations for the government or vote for the government and feel obliged to uh, support the government in many different ways. This is how populism works. And I'm sorry it offends Miguel uh, that, that, um, that populism is such an important part of Latin American politics. and. Uh, uh, you know, but that's the way it is in Latin America, and that tends to be the way it works in a lot of places in the world. When you have strong leaders who give patronage to their supporters and and keep it from the sectors that are in opposition to them. Miguel Tinkersellas, has that been a problem? Do you think with uh, Maduro now and Chavez before and, and picking who 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 gets uh, the benefits? The social programs, mission for for housing for food, etc. You don't show a, a, a PSUV card to walk into a Mercal. I've walked into a Mercal. I do not have a PSUV card. You have my, you have a cedula, which is your national ID card, which every Venezuelan has. Uh, you don't show an, a PSUV card to receive medical benefits, to receive eye care, to, to, to buy a book at One Bolivar, which is basically free, uh, to be able to gain access to the entire network. Uh, this is, a, 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 again, part of the discourse of the right-wing opposition in Venezuela. Venezuela, that somehow uh, only because again they, they think that a popular sector's ability to actually be empowered and, and have uh, effect and impact on their own uh, condition to be sort of an aberration. Uh, this is not about a different narrative. This is about reality. One need only read what the mood, the the, the uh, opposition coalition has written, uh, not not about individuals, but about what they have written, what they have stood for. This is the opposition that supported a coup. This is an opposition that went to the street. And let me just suggest that there are tremendous differences inside the opposition itself. That's why they can't agree on the question of the recall election, because back in January, Mr. Capriles wanted to start the recall, but Voluntad Popular from Leopoldo Lopez's and company didn't want the recall. They wanted to calentar la calle, heat up the street, and try to oust Maduro instead. And they waited until April to actually launch a recall, knowing that it can't be completed within the first year. Uh, that takes time to approve. So again, we have an opposition that by their own statements is to the right of the present is the collective political project um, and somehow we want to try to construct them into being something they're not let me suggest that there is a left opposition in venezuela but it's not in the mood um, and it even to yesterday's paper, today's paper, in fact, in Caracas, there's a big debate between the, uh, the, the Torrealba, the leader of the MUD, and Capriles Radonsky about whether we're going to proceed with protests or we're going to proceed with the recall. Are we going to have a constitutional convention? So the right is divided. They, they essentially don't have a positive project. How will they, the right wing deal with the dependence on oil? How will the right wing deal with uh, the fact that it hasn't rained in Minnesota for three years and hydroelectric dams are empty and electricity is missing and that's why we don't have water? How will the right wing deal with crime? which is a fundamental issue. 